everything was prepared for the best specialists, Ferreira, Bartoli, Kamenzin. However, the 2000 World Championship gave us one of the biggest surprises in the history of cycling. Do you want to know what happened on the way to Plie during the World Championship? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. October 15, 2000, a day reserved for professionals in the Road World Cycling Championships in Plie, France. Oscar Freire was the last winner and starts as a favorite in French lands. The Spaniard was aiming for his second World Championship after the unexpected and glorious victory the previous year at the World Championship in Verona. However, the strongest selection was clearly the Italian. The Transalpines, whose leaders were the pair of Bettini and Bartoli, had level cyclists such as Rebellin and Casa Grande, with Simone and Petacci in the bedroom and a young De Luca with absolute freedom for the assault of the rainbow dream. Other big favorites were Oscar Kamenzin, the Frenchman Jalabert, and Brochard, great specialists in one-day races, the Belgian Van Pietigen, and the always fighting riders of the East, like Chmil, Vinukorov, or Konichev. From the East will also come our great protagonist, but all in time. The 19 laps that the 159 riders had to do along the 269 kilometers turned out to be less selective than previously thought. Great news for Ferreira. If the Spanish team was able to control the race to reach the sprint, the Cantabrian would have every chance of winning. It was cool at first due to the torrential rain of the previous day, although the sun peaked out and inspired the attack of the Belgian Marechal on the Côte de la Zone during the third lap followed closely by two Frenchmen, Benetou and Moro, two Spaniards, Diaz Justo and Eladio Jimenez, an Italian, De Luca, a Russian, Lelikin, a Dutchman, Pronk, and a Swiss, Bouchard, who together starred in the first great breakaway of the day. The escape reached six minutes of advantage, but while riders like Moro, Bouchard, and Lelikin left everything in search of extending the distances, Spain and Italy preferred to perform a control work, so none passed to the relay. In the group, it was Poland who worked to favor Spush and Badecki, and the lead was reduced to 3 minutes and 30 seconds with 100 kilometers to go. Italian De Luca forced the pace at the Côte du Taimarek and stayed in front with Moro, Bouchat, Pronk, and Marischal, but the fate of the five was obviously set for sentencing. The young De Luca was ahead at the right moment when the Italian team was at the front of the peloton in the tactical plan of Coach Fusi to select the best. It was Luca Shinto who brushed past the riders who would go to fight for the victory and frustrate after 170 kilometers of escape, the attempt of the first brave who tried the difficult adventure. Here began the story of the Plie World Championship. At 38 kilometers from the finish line, Bartoli tried aware that he can do damage from afar, as he had already achieved in the past in Liege, Flanders, and precisely in the pre-World Championship held in Plie, although with lower mileage, on August 30th. But this time the bet did not pay off for the brave Italian cyclist. Chmil and Brochard left no room for him. With two laps to go, the race had no owner. Now the one who tries, Axel Merckx, son of the great legend, who won 10 seconds but was sucked by Federsen and Beltran, cyclists who also competed outside the World Championship with the jersey of the Mape team. During the ascent to the Côte de l'Azote, it was Rebellin who tried and for a few moments, the old Davide who was still in the peloton after years seemed that he could break the group, but the Spaniards don't let go. Beltran and Rubiera especially preparing the sprint for his teammate Oscar Freire. The turn now is for Andrea Chimil who has dynamite in his legs and could perhaps hit as he did in San Remo the previous year. The Moldovan, who became Belgian, acquired a margin of six seconds, but his time had not yet come, nor was Simoni, who attacked in the Côte de Taimaret, nor Casagrande, who at 1,500 meters was in the lead to the left of the road and was hit by the pursuing group. The Spanish team, which rubbed its hands before the predictable sprint, saw how the race got completely out of control without being able to put order at the head of the peloton. Again, Jamil tries it, under the banner of the last kilometer, and this time it really seems that he's the good one, with Rabiyin trying to catch him but failing. 
the final sprint was preceded by a small descent and was hardly uphill, something that Oscar Freire would have preferred. But the outcome was not the one dreamt by the special fixation of the Spanish leader with Michele Bartoli. The sprint was already launched after almost 270 kilometers and with Chamil and Rebellin overtaken by the peloton in the last 200 meters. Freire had to react on the fly and follow someone's wheel to come back. That's why he chose Bartoli's. The Spaniard came to touch it and stayed too close to the fences, locked and with little ability to maneuver. With all eyes focused on Ferreira and Bartoli, two figures stood out on the right of the road. It was Spurge and Roman Weinsteins who, surprisingly, were going to play for victory. With Bartoli and Ferreira ruled out, the Latvian, in a burst of strength, went ahead with apparent ease to get the biggest victory of his sporting career. To everyone's surprise, Roman Weinsteins, the Latvian cyclist, was proclaimed world champion of road cycling, a feat that will be part forever of the history of the world championships.